lived outside. We never, inside was where you slept. We didn't go in there much. Had a feed and a sleep, that was about it. Outside is where you lived, up trees, we climbed trees. Kids now, they're <laughs> not us. We're That's why we're so tough. I, I want to say something. Good to see, firstly, firstly, the first lady is in the house. And looking lovely, I might add, Pastor. How are you, Pastor Georgina? You look stunning. I was saying this morning that all the ladies here, they're just a beautiful bunch, aren't they? And look at you. You look younger. I saw you a few years, a couple of years ago. You've gone backwards about five years in age. About five years. Pastor Al, we've always got on well. But something's happened in the Holy Ghost today. I feel it. There's something I just feel with you. I feel like there's something happened in the Holy Ghost. And uh, that's not just words. I love the church and I love what's been happening today. But we're just warmed up. I'm sad. I, I'm sad I'm leaving. I might stay. I've got to catch a plane at 6.20 in the morning. What a stupid idea. Who organized that? Oh, man. But I thank you for having me, Pastor Alan. I thank you, everybody. And thanks for coming out tonight. And great to see you. And I love the team. You've got a great team here. And uh, we, have we had a good time, Pastor Chris? I tell you what, there's some big guys in the church. I feel at home. And Pastor Victor, you've got shoulders so wide, it's a miracle you get through the door. I mean, he, we don't need security when we've got Pastor Victor. And I like it around here because there's some really big guys. And I walk around and I go, yeah, I just feel average, average size. God's going to do something. Are you ready? Do you have your seatbelt fastened? If you have a helmet, put it on. We'll be flying at about two feet. There's no meal on this flight. Could you make sure your tray table is up right now, your seatbelt on, ready for takeoff? Father, I thank you for the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I thank you that you are here tonight to do miracles. Thank you for the power of your Holy Spirit in this meeting. We give you praise. You are going to do something outstanding in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. I want to talk tonight about the authority of Jesus as seen through the eyes of the centurion. So we'll call it the centurion's faith. Everywhere Jesus went, People marveled at the authority on Jesus' life. They were amazed at the authority that was in his words. In Luke 4, he went into the synagogue and a demon spirit began to scream. And Jesus cast the devil out of that man and the people were amazed. The word ek pleso, ek out of, out of their mind amazed, dumbfounded, and they said, what word is this? What a word is this? For with authority he speaks, and even the spirits are subject, the demons are subject, and they come out. And they said, what word is this? For it's different to the scribes and the doctors of the law, because with authority he speaks, not as the scribes. There's something in his words. And you know, we can hear preaching... You can hear preachers, but I love to hear preachers, and when they preach, there's something in their words that seem to ring in the realm of the Spirit. Jesus said, the words that I speak, John 6, 63, they are spirit and they are life. They're spirit. Our words need to be spirit. Life, strength, life to them that find it, health to all their flesh. And so the people were amazed. They followed him in droves, amazed, constantly commenting 
on the authority and the power that was in his words. They recognized that there was an authority coming that was different to religion. How many know there's a difference between being religious and carrying the anointing and the authority of Jesus? The difference is as far apart as you can get. Religion binds, but the power of God, the Spirit of the Lord, sets at total liberty. The disciples were amazed. Jesus stood on the front of a boat in a great storm. The Bible says it was a violent tempest blast. And Jesus stood at the front of the boat and he pointed to the wind and the waves and he said to the wind, be still. And a hurricane stopped. And the disciples said, what manner of man is this? That when he speaks, even the wind and the waves are subject to his words. You see, we know the story in the last week of his life as he was traveling between Bethany and Jerusalem. He was coming in and he was hungry. The Bible says he was hungry. He was going down there. He had a whip in his bag to turn over the money changes at the temple. He'd probably been up all night and hadn't had breakfast. He was hungry. And he came to a row of trees, fig trees, and they, most of them were out of season. But there was one that looked like it should be in season. It had the leaves. It looked like it was a, a tree that would have fruit. And he went up to that tree and he looked through the leaves and he found no figs. And he said, and it was a real statement prophetically of what was happening to Israel. But he said, no man will ever eat fruit of you here after. And the Bible says the disciples heard it. And the next day when they went again, Peter turned to John and said, look, the tree that he cursed is dead from the roots. And they said, Master, the tree that you cursed is dead from the roots. Jesus said, come over here. He said, if you've got faith, you'll do the same. He said, in fact, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you'll say to this mountain, and I would say he pointed to the Mount of Olives, and he'd say, say to that mountain, get up and go, and if you doubt not in your heart, but believe that what you say is going to come to pass, you'll have whatsoever you say. He said, have the God kind of faith. Have that speaking faith. Have that faith that doesn't say, oh, God. <laughs> but the faith that says, mountain, get up and move. The faith that doesn't say, oh, Lord, if you're going to help me, would you help me? We need the faith that says something's going to change right now. In the name of Jesus, my circumstances are turning. Father, I'm not worried about what's happening in my finances. I'm speaking to them. And I'm saying, devil, get off my finances. In fact, if you're a tither, he'll do the rebuking. In fact, if you're a tither, he says, you don't even have to rebuke the devourer. He'll do that for you. The Pharisees were amazed and they came to him and they said by what authority do you do these things and Jesus asked them a question he said I'll tell you but before let me ask you a question the baptism of John was it from God or was it from man and they knew that if they said it's from God he would have said why didn't you listen and if they said it's from man they would have stoned them. And they said, we don't know. He said, then neither will I tell you by what authority I operate. There's one man that seemed to understand. There's one man that even Jesus said, this man understands spiritual authority more than anyone I've met in all Israel. He was a Roman centurion. Roman centurion was a very significant man. This was a significant man. He, uh, as a centurion, was involved. Uh, the Romans they worked as engineers, as we know. They worked in infantry. The, um, they were in battle, but they're also the greatest builders in the world. They were architects. They built some of the most amazing structures on earth. The Colosseum, the great building, the Colosseum, was built, and uh, the architecture had cement. It was the first use of cement. In fact, today, the stadiums we see are built from a design that was designed right back there. It's interesting that the money that was used in, uh, with, by Titus was the money that came from the temple in Jerusalem when it was sacked. And the laborers that worked on it were Jewish slaves from the sacking of Jerusalem in 70 AD. But that's another story. And so this man was building. He was under the Herodians. And working, and Herod, of course, and his family after him, 
They were trying to appease the Romans. They were trying to appease the Jews. They were trying to appease those that were Hellenistic Jews, the Sadducees. They were trying to please everybody. And so they were building things for Rome, establishing cities. Herod established cities like Caesarea, which was a Roman city built with everything from stadiums to uh, everything that the Romans wanted. At the same time, building a massive temple in Jerusalem. Interesting that he put a Roman insignia on one end of it. But he was trying to please everybody. But here was a Roman centurion working there who had a servant who he, he loved this servant. This servant was special to him. He wasn't a Jew. This guy was not a converted Jew. He's not a proselyte Jew as we understand. He was certainly not a Christian. He was not a believer as such. But he did believe that there was one person who could help his servant who was critically ill. I guess he was a believer because he believed that this traveling preacher with signs and wonders was the answer to his dying servant. And so he sent a contingent down to him. And they went down to talk with him, to talk to Jesus. And they said, we have our our master back here, or he's a a centurion, uh, but he's very kind to us and he's worthy and he's putting money in and he's building a synagogue and he must have followed them because he came to Jesus and he said, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. Not even worthy that you come under my roof. Now, let's put a few things in perspective. I don't know how much you know about a centurion, but let's have a look at a Roman centurion and get an idea just who this man was. Firstly, if you study the Roman legion, the Roman legion was made up of between five and 6,000 men in the first century. The Roman legion was broken up into 10 sections called cohorts. So when they moved, they moved in sections, 10 sections. Each of these sections were broken up and they're broken up into six parts. And each of those six parts, which the numbers were anything 70 to 100 or whatever, 60 to 100, Uh, The century originally was 100, but it did begin to vary with the size of that legion, generally around 80, and uh, the the legion varied in size anyway, but about 80. And so you had um, this particular group, which was called a century, even though it wasn't 100. And it was watched over by a man who was a centurion. Now, who were these centurions? Firstly, they had to be over 30 years of age. They had to be uh, men who'd been tested. They'd been tested in battle. These were the hard men. These were not delicate. Not one centurion was a delicate man. Every one of them were covered in scars. In fact, Julius Caesar claimed that the greatest key to the battles with his legions was his chief centurion, who was over two centuries. There were 59 of them, one of them, The chief centurion guarded two, two centuries. This chief centurion had been in 180 battles and he was covered in scars, but he was the most profound man in holding the legions together. You study the history of the Roman legions who controlled things for 1,200 years and then later when the Roman Empire, when Rome was sacked, um, was it the Gauls and uh, then... The center of Rome became Constantinople for another thousand years. Again, the legions were the, were the power brokers. The legions themselves controlled the nation. They controlled the nation. More and more, it was the generals and the legions uh, that, that really had more and more control. But the, cent- the centurions were the strength, the glue. They were the most significant. They're very much like the the regimental sergeant major in the military. These were the ones who were the the highest ranking non-commissioned guys. I guess we'd liken them to a captain today. But these guys were powerful and they'd been tested. They were immovable. They had been proved that they would not move. They would stand their ground under the death. They did not move. They were immovable. They were highly literate. They had to be able to read in detail, understand 
because when the orders came down from the consul to the general to the tribunes to the camp prefect to the chief centurions and the order was coming down, they had to obey it to the letter. So when an order came, the centurion would take that order and distribute it with absolute detail and every man would act on that order precisely. He was under orders. He was the link carrying the order from there and putting it into operation there. He was set in authority. He led from the front and he was a marked man. He had a plume on his helmet that could have been varying colours, depend on the, we don't exactly know, it could have been yellow and black, it could have been green or red. Uh, we don't really know, those things haven't survived, but he stood out with this plume on his helmet. He stood with strength on the far left of the front of his group and he was first into battle, first into battle. He had a high attrition rate. He was a target, but he did not move. He knew his position. He knew who he was, where he fitted, and how it worked. He was a rigid disciplinarian. To such a degree, he carried a whip made of a vine, of twisted vines. And if a man stepped out of line in the ranks, he'd flog him with that whip. Man went to sleep, he would order to put pitch on him and set him on fire. He had the power to have a man scourged. He had authority and he ruled with authority to such a degree that it is recorded that the men feared the centurion more than they feared the enemy. He was the most feared man. When he spoke to something and said, you go, they moved. Absolutely. Absolutely. But he came to Jesus. And when he came to him, here is a centurion. These men moved around the city with total control. They were in total control of the city of Jerusalem. They had the power to kick a door open. They had the power to go straight into a house. And if they suspected something, they had the power to go and sort that thing out. They were brutal, hard, and feared. But this one came to Jesus. It's interesting in the scriptures, the number of centurions that was significantly used when the anointing of the Holy Spirit fell on the first group of Gentiles. It was in the home of a centurion. It was a centurion at the foot of the cross, a hardened man, covered in scars and brutal, standing at the foot of the cross with his, his vine whip, with his men who looked up and said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. It was centurions right through the book of Acts that worked with Paul. There was a centurion at, a great, at the shipwreck in chapter 27 of Acts who took his orders from Paul. Now came a centurion, a hard man, tough and feared to a lowly preacher in a nation that had been overrun to a preacher who was just one of a bunch of people ruled over by the might of Rome. And he came to him. And it's powerful, the first word that he spoke, because he came to Jesus and he said, Lord. The word Lord is the Greek word kurios, Sovereign in power. There was a whole legion called the Theban Legion in history who refused to take a pinch of incense because they were Christians and put it on the altar to the Caesar. And so they carried out decimation, the first 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, brought them out and they, they then had to club their own men to death. They said, will you recant now? And put a sprinkle to the, to the Caesar. No. So the second one were decimated. Until the whole legion of over 6,000 men had died. Because they wouldn't put a pinch of incense to the one who was their emperor God. But a centurion came to Jesus and declared, you sir are the sovereign. You sir 
kurios. Sovereign Lord. And he said to him, sir, I'm just like you, but different. He said, firstly, I'm not worthy that you even come under my roof. This is a Roman in a country ruled over by Rome. And he says, sir, you are Roman. I'm a Roman, but I'm not worthy to come under your roof a Jew. He said, but if you just say in a word, if you just speak a word, I know my servant will be healed. He said this. He said, sir, I too am a man set under authority. I'm set in a place under authority. I'm under the might of Rome. I handle orders from above. They come down to me. I speak them. I put them into operation. I say to that man, go, we've got something to do. He goes. I speak to that man, go, and he goes. You, sir, come. He comes. But he said, in comparison, you're under some power so great that your place of authority, you're set under something I don't even understand. He said, I tell men to go, but you speak and devils go. You speak and disease goes. You speak and the blind see. You speak and the deaf hear. And Jesus said to all around, this man, I've never seen faith like this. And he marveled. He marveled. He said, this man understands faith in the kingdom. And you see, the big problem in the body of Christ is that often we fail to understand that we too have been set under authority. Jesus said to his disciples, all authority is given in my name. Go ye therefore. He said, I've set you into place. Greater miracles will you do than I've done. I'm going to the Father, but I'm giving you two things. Number one, I'm filling you with power. I'm brooding over you and I'll give you instructions. I'll guide you. I'll lead you. I'll show you what to do. I'll move you. And I've given you all the fullness of the Spirit of God because it says you and I have been filled with all the fullness of the Spirit. And he said, and I've given you the authority of my name. So go ye therefore. So we understand tonight where we are. Where are we? We're seated with him. We talked about that this morning. We are seated with him. Where does our authority come from? It comes from our position as sons and daughters of the living God. We have his authority and his power. And he says, go and use it. Speak to your mountain. Speak to disease. Speak to devils. Speak to cancer. We have authority in this building right now to speak to disease, to speak to devils, and to cast them out, to speak to things that are against your family, to speak to things that are against your business. He says, speak to your mountain, speak to your mountain, speak, say to your mountain, get up and move. If you don't doubt in your heart, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you begin to speak to stuff and it'll get up and move. We change our lives by our words. We change our eternity by our words. Too often our words are weak. But when the body of Christ begins to speak, see a lot of people feel, hey, things are nearly gone 
in America. <coughs> but there's a lot of Christians rising up and saying, no, this is our hour. And some people feel like, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to rise up in the greatest opportunity it's ever been. We're going to stand up in the power of God. We're going to stand up under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. We're going to stand up in the fire of the Holy Ghost. We're going to stand up and begin to speak to our mountains. And there's mountains here tonight. There's mountains here. And I think it would be a great night to move some. How many believe that? How many believe that? A great night to move some mountains. A great night to move some mountains. Hallelujah. Why don't we do that? Why don't we do that right now? Jesus. Jesus. Let's just close our eyes for a moment. Thank you. Thank you. I'm conscious of a hip situation. It's a bit of a displacement in your hip. And it's affected your back and it's affecting your body. It needs a miracle in your hip. There's several people need a miracle in their hip tonight. In your hip. If that's you, just come. Just come right now. As I call your condition, just come. Would you come if that's you? Someone has had a fall on the base of their spine and damage right on that coccyx bone at the bottom of your spine. And you need a miracle right down in your lower back. If that's you, just come. If I'm calling your condition at all, would you leave your place and come? Would you do that? Don't wait. Just come. If I'm calling your condition, I want you to come. Just come. Don't wait. Don't wait. Just come. I'm waiting for you now. Just come. I'll keep moving as you come. As you come. That's it. That's it. Someone is, I I think it may be a whiplash. I feel as though it's a motor accident that has damaged the upper part of your back. A lot of stiffness across your shoulders, your neck, and your upper back. And God wants to heal you. Would you come tonight? Whoever that is, just leave your place and come. Just come right now. Just come right now. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Come Come now. How many people need a miracle in their back tonight? You need a a, a miracle in your back. Give me a wave. That'll be a lot. That'll be a lot. Everyone that needs a healing in your back, stand to your feet quickly. Just stand to your feet. You need a healing in your back. And come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Holy Spirit, just come with us. We want to keep moving here. Just keep coming. Don't be shy. Come believing. Come expecting. Come expecting. Come expecting. Who has... um, In your spine, the vertebrae, particularly in your neck, but it is like a depreciating of the... um, of your neck... The vertebrae are depreciating and you need a miracle in your neck. Would you come? Would you come? Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. There's several people have had whiplash and motor accidents affecting your neck. Someone has had unusual bleeding from your kidneys. Jesus. Is there someone with celiac disease? I'd like to pray for you tonight. Celiac disease. Just come. Just come. Just come. All right, Holy Spirit, you're going to do something powerful here. Something powerful. I'd like the first half a dozen folk over here just to come up on the platform. Just direct the first six folk, six or seven folk up on the platform. That's it. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. Just come. God wants to heal all over this building tonight. Sister, you come. You ladies come up this way. Just come up here. That's it. What have you done? What have you done, sister? What have you done? Can you come up here? Come, they'll help you. These guys will help you. These guys will help you. What have you done, sir? Come up. Come up this way. Sister, would you come? Sister, here. Just come. 
Just come. Are you ready for your miracle? What are you suffering with? In your hip, you've torn cartilage. Are you in pain? Are you ready for total healing? Now listen. She's torn cartilage in her hip. What sort of pain do you have with that? It causes my joints to lock, and then the pregnancy weight on it makes it short. Would you know right now if you're healed? You can do some things to test it. Give me a hand. I'm going to lift your hand up in the air. As we do, every trace going out of your hip, every trace. Are you ready? You feel it, don't you? Go, 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 go now! Who else has a hip problem? Who else has a hip problem? How's that back, sir? How's that feel? How's that feeling, sir? Is that feeling good? Come here. What happened? No more pain. What couldn't you do when you came? Start moving. I've been attacked for three pit bulls. 1912, and then that was her for the past four years, my back. You've had four years of pain. It's gone tonight. What couldn't you do when you came in? Oh, I can, I can lift hands. I can lift too much weight. And move, as, move as much as you can now. Do what you couldn't do. You couldn't do that? You're healed by the power of God. God bless you, sir. Who else has got a hip problem? Just come. Just come. You've got a hip problem? What's wrong with your hip? How's that feel? How's that feel? Move it. Has God healed you? Come over here. What couldn't you do? How's that now? God's touched you. It's not clean. No pain. It's the Holy Spirit. All right, are you ready? What are you suffering with? Packed my hip and then I punctured my lung. Like broke almost all my ribs. How did you do that? Lift your hands. Give me a hand. Give me a hand. I'm going to lift it high. Do you believe every trace of pain's going? Are you expecting it now? Are you expecting it now? Go! Are you ready to be healed? Give me a hand. What are we praying for? Pain from there. Lower back to your hip for how long? Go right now. Come, sister. Something happened today, didn't it? What happened to you today? back to normal take it now take it now take it that's it take it all take it all take it all hello sister what do you need what do you need your hip are you ready are you ready take it now right through your body that's it start to move it what's happened your neck are you ready are you ready are you ready father Right now, the anointing. Jesus' name. What have you done, sister? Sorry? You've fallen a lot of times. And arthritis. You're ready to be completely healed? You're... It's gone. The pain's already gone from your hip. The pain, she says, already gone out of a hip. Who have we missed? Come over this way. What are you suffering with? Car accidents? I've fallen down the stairs at um, 15 and I've been in multiple car accidents. And what is wrong in your body? My back, I just, sometimes it, I have to pop it in order to feel it in place and it just, it hurts sometimes. Do you know if you're healed tonight? Give me a hand. 
loosed by the power of God. Right now, loosed. Come, sir. What are you suffering with? We're stepping into something here tonight. We're stepping into something tonight. I want you to just lift your hands to Him. There's stuff getting healed across the building as you're just sitting here. As you are just sitting in the building right now, the power of God is present to heal. To heal. I prayed this morning for people with digestive problems. If you have digestive problems, I want you to come and just stand at the front. Anything digestive, anything that you have that's a digestive problem, would you come? Would you come? Just come. Any allergies, food allergies, would you come? Would you come? Anyone with ulcers, would you come? Just come. Just come. Just come. You know the anointing is getting stronger here by the minute. There's nothing impossible tonight. Nothing's impossible. How's that feel? I guess you're not sure yet. You say, why do you pray on the platform? Well, you can see what's happening. And you can believe with me. So I want each of you to come up here. Would you do that? Are you still waiting, sir? Oh, you're, you're looking after that. Okay. Each of you come up this way. How's your shoulders, sir? Healed this morning. Had some great healings this morning. Spirit of God. Come expecting. Come expecting. Come expecting. What's happening, sir? Sir, what do you need? I just power from heaven. I tell you, it's getting strong. Come back and have some more, brother. Come back this way. I got power from heaven. Power of the Holy Ghost. Come here, sir. Come up this way. We're just warming up here right now. Hands up to God. Totally. Come, ma'am. I want to pray with you. Come over this side, folks doing a great job there. What do you need? I'm allergic to milk and I need God to heal my heart. Lactose intolerant, you need a touch in your heart. Take it now. Come sister, what do you need? Come sister, come sister. Listen, we're believing together, correct? We're believing together. We're believing together. You ready? Are you ready? Take your miracle right now. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. I want you to step into something right now. I want you to step into something in the Holy Ghost. I want you to step into the anointing. Step into something in God. I'm getting a healing in my knee. I'm getting one. It was it was bad this morning when I left. I twisted it last week. I've got I played football on bone on bone. Fifteen years ago, the doctor said you need you're going to have to have knee replacements. I said I'll get my own. And I've been believing for fifteen years. I put up with a lot of pain, and I'm going no. I'm going to have them. 
going to have it, but I might get a hand coming down here, bro. It's okay. Yeah, that's it. Just in case. Oh, you're like a gazelle. Look at those shoes, man. Jesus, come here, sister. Lift your hands up to God. Power of God's on you right now. Jesus, come here, sister. Come up this way. Father, let your mighty power go right through her body, head to toe. Come here, sister. I know who you are. I know exactly. I've seen pictures of you. How about that? God bless you. Jesus. Come come here, Mrs. Tim. Come up this way. My God, my God, power from heaven right now. Come here, my brother. Lift your hands up to God. As you do, the power of God goes right through you. Come up, sister and brother. You together? I like these two. The big fella. How are you, sir? My God, my God, my God. Oh. Holy Spirit. Come here, Pastor. Pastor Raul. Lift your hands up. The greatest dimension of miracle power you've ever known. Moving into a whole new place of the anointing. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost come on him right now. Come here, my brother. Come up this way. I met you this morning. My God, power from heaven. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Come here, my brother. Come up this way. Holy Spirit. God. Hello, brother. Come over here. God, the anointing. God, the anointing. Father, the anointing right through this house. Stay with me, guys. strong. Power of the Lord. Powerful. Jesus the anointing. Come here my brother. Come over this way. Lift your hands up to God. Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. How are you? You're used to all this? Fire from heaven. Jesus name. Jesus name. Jesus the anointing. How's your shoulders? Heal this morning. Heal this morning. My God. Power. Holy Spirit. Right through this building. Jesus, the anointing. Stay with me. Jesus, hello, sir. Come up here. My God. My God. You're healed. Cut the anointing. Come here, sir. Come up this way. Both of you. Come up here. Jesus. Come up here, sir. Ma'am, come up. That's it. This lady. Sister here. Come. Yeah. Brother, you come. Brother. Yeah, come up here. There's an anointing in the house. There's an anointing of God in this house. It's not by might nor by power. Hello. Jesus. Jesus, come here, sir. Mighty Holy Spirit. What's wrong? What have you done? This man had an accident. 
He's had all sorts of stuff going on. You say, why is he under the power like that? I sort of see the Spirit of God flows and you're like the anaesthetist. And then God, he's on the operating table. It's none of my business now. Come here, sir. Brother, in the, yep. Just come. Lift your hands up to the Lord. It's a new day of power. It's a new day of hunger. Fire from heaven. Come here, sir. Lift your hands. My God, the anointing. How is that feeling any better? Is that getting better? Feeling good? What's your name? Oh, that's a good name. God bless you. Lovely to meet you. Just take a seat here and soak that in. Come here, sir. What's your name? G'day, Frank. It's a good name, Frank. Come here, sir. You come back again. You come here, sister, please. Can I pray for you, the lady with the spots? Yeah. I want to pray for you. Did you come? Come on. Come on. Come up here. I'm just going to pray for people for a while. Is that okay, Pastor? I just feel like the Holy Ghost wants to soak the whole church. Fire from heaven. Fire. I think he just wants to soak this place. I think he's just soaking this place. Jesus, 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 everybody see, come here my brother, come up, come up you guys, one, two, three, everybody say Jesus, come here my brother, yeah, fire, Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire from heaven. God. God. God is not by might nor by power. It's not by might nor by power. But it's by my spirit. Stay with me, God. Jesus. Come here, my brother. Come up here, sir. Both of you come. Sir, come. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. My God, my God, power from heaven. Jesus, come over, sir. Put your hands up to God. As you do, the power of God goes through you. Come, sir. Good to see you. Jesus, we have authority tonight over powers and principalities. Over devils. Over everything raised up against the knowledge of God. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. This dear lady got healed this morning. How have you been feeling? Well all day. Well all day. She had pain right through her body. Come here. Come up here. Come up here, dear sister. Tell us what happened to you this morning. Uh, the pain left me for the first time in years. Got How many years? Maybe five. Maybe five. Maybe what was your condition? Neuropathy. Neuropathy, the uh, nerve damage. Of that and how do you feel now? I feel Jesus. Jesus. Now, if you're in pain in your body, how many people are in pain right now? Take a seat, folks. But if you're in pain, come and stand here right now. If you're in pain, I don't care what your condition, just come. If you are in pain, where are you in pain, sir? Where are you feeling that? Come up, come up. Where are you feeling your pain? In your hands. Go. Where are you in pain, sir? Ready for it to go? go. Where are you in pain? In your hip. Jesus, go right now. Where are you in pain, sir? Go right now. Where are you in pain, ma'am? In your arm. Are you ready? Are you ready? Go. Go, go, go. Where's your pain, sir? Come here. You ready? Take your healing right now. Come here.
here, sir. Where's your pain? Lift your hands. Go right now. Come, man. Where's your pain? In your leg. Lift your hands. In your knee. Go. Where's your pain? Lift your hands. Go. Where's your pain? Sister, where's your pain? Go! A little closer, guys. You're in pain, sir? Go right now, sir. Where's your pain? In your knee. Stay with me, fellas. Power from heaven. Come, sir. Where's your pain? Just keep coming. Keep coming. Let me tell you, this place is infused with the power of God. Nothing impossible here. Go. Next one. Where's your pain, sir? Go right now. Come here. Put your hands. Go from your body. Go from your body. Go from your body. Come here, sir. Go. Okay. It's a little easier, that's it. That's lovely. That's lovely. Just, that's good. Just don't stop. It's beautiful. It's anointed. I want you to lift your, how's that feel? Better? How many just had pain leave? Give me a wave. How many have just been healed tonight so far? How many have been healed? Give me a big wave if God touched you tonight. All right. We're just warming up right now. Anyone with tumors, growths, or cancer, come right now. You're battling with tumors, growths, cancer, just come. Any sort of abnormal growths, just come. You don't need that. Jesus spoke to the fig tree. Jesus spoke to the fig tree and cursed it at the roots. I speak, I speak at the roots and Curse it now. Curse it now. Who's the person that wakes up in the night and you have dreams that shake you up? You don't even want to go back to sleep. Your night is just full of dreams. Come on, come here. I believe that someone gets the dream so bad that you just about can't take it. You just about can't take it. Brother, I'm going to command this devil that's oppressing you to Break its power right now. Come, come, dear sister, come up this way. So you get bad dreams, do you? How long have you had them? Was there anything happened back there, demonic or were you? Well, I'll tell you something. That's yesterday. You know, now I'm going to tell you something. That's in the recess of memory. But you know, Jesus, we're time travelers in God. We can go forward or back. In prophecy, we go forward, but when we face a situation, we can go back and erase that thing. Give me a hand. We're going to step back in time, and I'm going to tell the devil that he's a liar, and whatever's happened to you does not have dominion. It's actually not even true anymore because you're a new creature, right? You're a new creature. So that's history. It's got no power. Because the devil keeps trying to bring it. Now, I'm just going to instruct him that he has no place. And right now, we're together, aren't we? I break it off you. In Jesus' name. Someone here, you have recurring dreams of your own death. You have dreams that trouble you relating to death. And if that's you and you want to come, feel free. Feel free. If you have an addiction, 
If you have an addiction to drugs, if you have an addiction to alcohol, have an addiction to tobacco, just come right now and form a line over here. We're going to take authority. We're going to break its power. We're going to break its power. We're going to break its power. If you have an addiction to pornography, drugs, any rotten thing, just come. Tobacco. We're going to take dominion. As the Bible says, He who the Son sets free shall be free indeed. Free indeed. Free indeed. Free of memories. Free! Watch this. Let's stay with me, guys. Free! In Jesus' name, I loose you now. In Jesus' name, loose you now. Don't. You've got to catch.